Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at previous year questions of chemistry asked in various medical and entrance examinations in India. Today we're going to be dealing with an important topic. The name of this topic is states of matter. So in this video we're going to be looking at two chapters basically. One chapter is states of matter. This is found in grade 11 syllabus of CBSE and the other is the solid state which talks specifically about the solid state state of matter that which is the first chapter in the grade 12 syllabus for CBSE. So there are a lot of questions from this combination and we're going to be looking at some of them today. Here lies our first question. This is very straightforward. Value of the gas constant R is 0 0.082 liter atoms, 0.987 cal calories mole inverse Kelvin inverse, 8.3 joule mole inverse Kelvin inverse, and 83 erg mole inverse Kelvin inverse. So basically these are the values, so allegedly the values of the gas constant. So they are basically the values of the gas constant, but uh, they are in different units, which is liter atom, SI unit, in calories, and the CGS unit. So we need to find out the correct value of R so that we can agree to it, which of these is correct. So the correct value of R as per the SI unit, which is System International, is equal to 8.314 joule mole inverse Kelvin inverse. So this is the value of R in the SI unit. So if you were to check out option C, then it is correct. So option C is the correct option. If you look at option C, it says 83 erg mole inverse Kelvin inverse. But the problem here is that one joule stands for about 10 raised to 7 erg. So therefore, 83 erg mole inverse Kelvin inverse will not be the value of R. So R in the CGS unit actually has the value 8.3 into 10 raised to 7 erg mole inverse Kelvin inverse. Now the same value of R when you put calories instead of joules, you will get 1.987 calories mole inverse Kelvin inverse and if you look at option B which is measured which is written in calories you see that the value here is incorrect so option B is incorrect now what about option A 0 0.082 liter atom well numerically R in liter atom I mean liter atmosphere is correct it'll be 0 0.082 liter atmosphere but then what happens is that the unit here is distorted the unit also has mall inverse Kelvin inverse so liter atom is in place of the unit of energy that is joule so therefore option a is also incorrect because the unit for liter atom is incorrect it is 0 0.082 liter atom mole inverse Kelvin inverse <clears throat> let's look at the next question so Kinetic theory of gases, it proves which of these laws? Boyle's law, Charles' law, Avogadro's law, all of these. So as you can see, it also includes questions from chapter kinetic theory, which is basically another chapter in the grade 11 syllabus for CBS. So every, any chapter that's dealing with a state of matter is being discussed in this section that is states of matter. So moving on. So how do we prove that these laws are verified in kinetic theory? Well, for that, we can use this simple relation. Average kinetic energy is proportional to temperature. Now, this average kinetic energy can be written down as 1 by 2 times m times n times velocity of light rms squared that is proportional to T, so we can write that as equal to KT. K is a constant. Now, 
In this scenario, we can also write pressure times volume as 1 by 3 mn c rms squared. So we will write it as 2 by 3 times 1 by 2 mn c rms squared. So basically, 2 by 3 kT will be the value of pressure times volume. So these two relations are very important. So especially the second relation is extremely important because it's from this relation that we're going to prove that some of these laws are proved by kinetic theory. So <clears throat> suppose you have a constant temperature then you will notice that the average kinetic energy is also constant because average kinetic energy is proportional to the time period. So therefore, the average kinetic energies are also constant. And since the average kinetic energy can be written as half mn c rms squared, so m and n are constants, so c r m s value is also unchanged that is also unchanged so the crms value is unchanged the temperature is unchanged so therefore the right hand side of this equation will now be 2 by 3k so p times v equals 2 by 3k the right hand side is constant so therefore the left hand side which means P and V have to undergo a relation. So for example, if volume increases, then you must have a decrease in pressure. Otherwise, PV equals two by three K will not work. So therefore P is inversely proportional to V, which is the exact statement for the first of our laws, that is Boyle's law. So kinetic theory of gases does prove Boyle's law. But does it only prove Boyle's law? Let's find out. Now, in the equation PV equals 2 by 3 kT, suppose your temperature increases. So when temperature increases in the first relation, you will notice that the average kinetic energy increases as well. And when the average kinetic energy increases, the C RMS, that is the velo RMS velocity of light, will also increase since half mnc RMS square is equal to kT. So C RMS also increases. Now what happens if C RMS increases? You get more collisions between particles which automatically results in an increase of pressure. Now you know that pressure increases and temperature also increases if you don't have a change in volume. Now suppose it's the other way around. You want to maintain constant pressure. So if pressure is constant, then in order to have the relation, I mean, PV equals 2 by 3 kT to be true, then volume has to increase with respect to temperature. So that means V is proportional to T, which is Charles' law. So as you can see, kinetic theory proves both Boyle's law and Charles' law. So both options A and B are incorrect, and that also means that C has to be incorrect because it cannot only go for Avogadro. So it's already been proven for both Boyle's law and Charles' law. So the right answer is option D, all of these. But if you have a confusion regarding Avogadro's law, what you can do is you can write P1V1 as equal to 2 by 3 kT1, P2V2 as equal to 2 by 3 kT2. So we consider that. And, and if P1 equals P2 and T1 equals T2, then we can write P1V1 by P2V2 equals 2 by 3 kT1 divided by 2 by 3 kT2. So P1 and P2 cancels each other, T1 and T2 cancels each other. 2 by 3 k can be written down as n. So therefore, V1 by V2 
is equal to n1 by n2, which is the statement for Avogadro's law. Now here comes our next question for an ideal gas, number of moles per liter in terms of its pressure P, gas constant R, and temperature T is PT by R, PRT, P by RT, RT by P. How do we prove, I mean, how do we find out the expression here? It's pretty easy. We use the ideal gas equation. So in the ideal gas equation, you will write that PV is equal to N times RT. <clears throat> so we take volume to the right hand side, we take RT to the left hand side, so basically P by RT will be equal to N by V. N is the number of moles, V is volume, so number of vol moles per liter will be written as P by RT in terms of pressure, gas constant, and temperature. Let's look at this question. This is from solid state. Sodium and magnesium crystallize in BCC and FCC type crystals respectively. Then the number of atoms of sodium and magnesium present in the unit cell of their respective crystal is. So <clears throat> in order to make this answer easy, I've given you a BCC and an FCC diagram. So in the BCC, you can see you have one full cell plus, I mean, one full atom plus eight atoms with one-eighth of their contribution inside the cell. So therefore, it's one plus one, that is equal to two. So in BCC, the number of atoms present is two. So since BCC is written first, Option D, 2 and 4 will be the correct answer. Let's verify it. So in FCC, you have six faces, eight corners. So that means 6 into 1 by 2 plus 8 into 1 by 8. This equals 1. 6 by 2 is 3, so 3 plus 1 equals 4. Let's move on to the final question of this episode. And this question is also dependent on solid state. How many unit cells are present in a cube-shaped ideal crystal of NaCl of mass 1 gram? Over here, atomic masses of sodium and chlorine are given. Now remember, here mass is given as 1 gram, and we can write mass as density times volume. And we can also find the molecular weight of NaCl as 28, I mean 23, plus 35.5, that is equal to 58.5. So, <clears throat> as you can see, you have the molecular weight and you also have the mass. All you need to do is to find the number of unit cells, number of unit cells, in cube shaped crystal of NaCl of mass one gram. So that is equal to density times volume times Na divided by Z times M. So A cube is volume, so density into volume will be equal to mass times Na divided by molar mass times Z. Over here, mass is 1 gram times 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 divided by M is 58.5 times 4. So basically now you multiply 585 by 4. 5 4 is at 20. 8 4 is at 32. 32 plus 2 is 34. 5 4 is at 20. 20 plus 3 is 23. So since there's a point in 58.5, there'll be a point after one decimal. So therefore, 234 is the denominator. And you can write the numerator as 6023 times 10 raised to 19. So basically, you have 6023 divided by 234. Let's do that on this free end. So 6023 divided by... 234. 
So let's take the first three digits, 602, so 234 times 2 already gives you 468. If you were to use 3, then that becomes 702. So therefore, 468 is written. 12 minus 8 is 4. 9 minus 6 is 3. 5 minus 4 is 1, so you have 134. Just put down the 3, so you get 1343. Three. So <clears throat> the closest value will be 234 times 5, that is 1170. If you were to multiply more, then it goes to 1400, so it will not be sufficient. I mean, it will be too much. So 3 minus 0 is 3. Um, so now you have 14 minus 7 is 7. Um, 2 minus 1 is 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0, so 173. So you put a point and write 0, so 1730. So <clears throat> we will write that as 234 times 7, since 234 times 7 is 1638. So <clears throat> 1638 will be written here. So 10 minus 8 is 2. 12 minus 3 is 9. 6 minus 6 is 0. And 1 minus 1 is also 0. So therefore, you get an approximate of 25.7. So 25.7 into 10 raised to 19. Now, Making it in scientific notation, you will get 2.57 into 10 raised to 21 unit cells. 0 0.023 into 10 raised to 23, 10 raised to 22, 10 raised to 21. So this is actually 10 raised to 20, not 10 raised to 19. That was where the mistake was coming from. So 2.57 into 10 raised to 21 unit cells is the correct answer.